What's up everybody? I'm Danash. Welcome to my channel, That Vocal Vegan, where I post content about veganism. And as of my last video, ukulele covers. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not, how do you like the new scenery? So if you're watching this video, you're probably either new to veganism or you're trying to adopt a more plant-based lifestyle and you're looking for some help in making the transition. Maybe you watched a documentary recently or you have a friend that won't shut up about it. <laughs> Whatever the reason, I hope this video can make your life a little bit easier. I've been vegan for over two years now, and so I want to share with y'all all the tips that I always give to my friends about going vegan, which they don't really ask for, but <laughs> before we begin, I'm going to go over three things that I think are going to be important for the video. So one, I'm wearing a hat because my hair is a disaster up there. I've been moving around a lot the last couple months, and so trust me, <laughs> I'm doing us all a favor here. The next thing is I'm going to be using the term whole plant food or whole food a lot. And what I mean by that is just an unprocessed food. So I like Dr. Michael Greger's definition of it, which is nothing good taken out of a food and nothing bad added into the food. So think rice, beans, tofu, that kind of stuff. And the third and most important thing is, is if you're watching this video and you're trying to make the change, I believe in you, you can do this. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. Try to focus on the foods that you're adding rather than the foods that you're taking out. I know we all get overwhelmed with, oh my God, no cheese. But seriously, we've all been there before and my diet has become much wider and more diverse since going vegan. I'm eating all kinds of whole grains, legumes, pasta, creams made of nuts and seeds and combining them all in ways that I'd never done before. And let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make a video talking about all the new foods that I discovered, food that was always around, but that I just never ate before going vegan and now I eat a ton of and I love. I'm just kidding. I'm going to make a video about that regardless of what y'all comment. And to give you all an idea of the different types of dishes you can have, you can have smoothie bowls, lentil curries, and tofu stir fries, chickpea pancakes, and I promise you they're good. My roommates used to make me make them for them when they came home drunk. Remember the why. So remember why you wanted to go vegan or follow a more plant-based lifestyle in the first place. You may have watched something about animal exploitation, the environment, health, and I'd recommend watch more of these documentaries. Get more informed of the entire scope of the impact of veganism. After all, you know what they say, knowledge is power. Get a better understanding of the impact that you're making through this change that you're making, and that should help you with the transition because if you're just kind of doing it without a purpose, it can get much harder to stick to it. I'd also recommend getting comfortable in the kitchen. Look, you don't have to be vegan Gordon Ramsay, but honestly, I think learning to cook is such an important life skill, period. It's so much cheaper, it gives you more control of your life in terms of what you're putting into your body, and you're not dependent on others for the rest of your life for feeding yourself. And the beginning recipes can be super easy. Just start with staples, oatmeal, sandwiches, pasta with marinara sauce, smoothies, and uh, a little bit of a self-promotion here. But I recently just posted a what I eat in a day video. Hopefully y'all can use that to see what I eat and use it as inspiration. I recently posted the recipe in the description thanks to the recommendation of these two comments. Shout out to y'all too. And there's tons of vegan what I eat in a day videos, so check those out to get some ideas. Make sure you're giving your body what it needs. When I say make sure you're giving your body what it needs, I'm referring to getting all the nutrients you need and all the calories that you need. I've seen people and heard of accounts where they just remove the meat from their meals. So if it's like broccoli, chicken, and rice, they'll just have broccoli and rice and call it a meal. Don't do that. You'll end up on the news. Think about it more in terms of replacing, not removing. So anything, for example, that has minced beef, you can replace it with lentils, or you can replace it with Beyond Beef if you can afford that. Or if you have a pad thai that normally has some protein, swap it with chickpeas, for example. There are some ideas for you. Try to stick to calorically equivalent replacements. I hate when restaurants give you a portobello steak instead of a regular steak. That is not the same. Mushrooms have barely any calories compared to a steak. You're gonna be so hungry afterwards, so don't do that. Another good idea is to check out Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. I keep mentioning this guy, Dr. Greger. He's a really renowned plant-based doctor who posts a lot of research. So he's a great resource for vegans looking for information on a plant-based diet. So his Daily Dozen list is basically a list of 12 foods. Well, it's really 10, like one of them's like water, the other one's exercise. But of things that you should be eating on a daily basis, Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen is basically the vegan food pyramid. It's just a great guide for plant-based eating. It's not like I'm hitting everything on there every day either. 
But like I mentioned, it's a good North Star. And honestly, when you check out that list, you're gonna be thinking, man, I didn't realize there was so much food to eat. So if you're gonna be hitting that, you're probably gonna be hitting all the nutrients that you need. And the last thing I note is use chronometer. That's something that I outlined in that same What I Eat In A Day video. It gives you a good breakdown of the macronutrients and micronutrients, so I really recommend checking out the app. And by the way, if you're finding the content of this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel because I'd love this video to reach as many people as possible, and I'd love to grow my small little channel. Looking to getting a blood test after a few months. They're relatively cheap and easy to get, and honestly, I think we should all be doing that non-vegan or not, just to check where we are nutrient-wise. Most people don't really have any idea what they're putting into their body, so it's always good to get a little pulse. I got mine a year after going vegan. I know I probably should've done it a few months after, but I came out fine and everything, so. And if you do come up short in any of the vitamins, the jig is up. You found out that veganism isn't nutritionally adequate. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just look up vegan source of whatever you were deficient in. If you get hungry or are feeling tired, eat more. Eating a plant-based diet is a diet of abundance. Pound for pound, whole plant foods are not gonna be as calorically dense as animal products. So you'll find yourself eating more volume than you ever have before, which I think is a huge plus. People say that vegans don't like eating, but I love eating and that hasn't changed. Also, you can use chronometer to keep track of your calories and make sure that you're getting enough, so. All right. Take it easy on the beans and fiber. So when you go from like a typical Western diet to a whole food plant-based diet, your fiber intake skyrockets. And that can lead to flatulence. And beans and legumes tend to be a big culprit of that. So if you're not used to eating those a lot, I'd recommend increasing your intake slowly. But worry not my friends, that does go away after a couple of weeks. And that's not just anecdotal, I'll post a study below that shows that people after a couple of weeks did not report any more bloating or flatulence from consuming beans. But I will be honest, if you go from zero to 100 in terms of bean intake like I did, um, yeah, you will have some smelly farts probably. And oh God, this is embarrassing because I went vegan when we were still in the office and a lot of my ex coworkers who I was working with at the time watched these videos and uh, they had to suffer through the beginning of my journey. So, híjole, les pido una disculpa enorme. All right, supplement. This is not negotiable. If you are vegan, you should be supplementing with B12. Actually, I take that back. If you're watching this video, you should be supplementing with B12. Up to 40% of people in Western populations have either low or marginal status in B12. So we don't get enough B12, period. Supplement your B12. I'll make a separate video about B12 and vegan supplementation to go more in depth because that could be a whole video on its own. But the other two that I'd recommend for supplementing are vitamin D3. We get vitamin D from the sun, but it could be worthwhile to supplement and don't skip this part, algae-based omega-3. I'll post a link for Dr. Greger's page where he talks about all the different nutrients that vegans should pay attention to and whether or not he recommends supplementing. And he's a medical professional, so I trust him over me. Find vegan restaurants around you or restaurants that serve vegan food. Just because you go vegan doesn't mean all of a sudden you're eating super healthy all the time. You can still indulge in junk food and treats, like fruit. I'm just kidding, fruit is good for you. But honestly, once you start looking for vegan food, you'll notice that it's all around you. I always make this comparison, but people never seem to relate. So let me know if you relate. But it's like when you're in college and you meet someone at a party and you're like, oh, this person's so awesome. Like, how have I never met them before? And then you start seeing them everywhere. And it's not because they weren't there, it's just you didn't notice them. You weren't looking for them. See, that made sense, right? That's happened to everybody. And I'll give some examples of foods you might not even realize are vegan. Like Oreos are famously vegan. This is massively underrated food in Mexico called mazapan. It is, it is so good. It's like this peanut butter brittle goodness and it's totally vegan. So if you ever come to Mexico, you should be definitely looking for mazapan. They sell them everywhere. Another example is here in Mexico, there's a place called El Moro where they sell churros. And those, chur and, and those churros, huh, I got mixed up with like the English and Spanish there, are completely vegan. And every time I tell a Mexican person, they're like, what, those are vegan, but like how? And honestly, like, I don't know, like they fry them in vegetable oil. I don't know what they make them out of, but they're vegan. So like I said, a lot of the time, the vegan food is just out there. And a really good app is also the Happy Cow app. It's an app that works internationally. I've used it around the world and it tells you where there are vegan restaurants and where they serve vegan options. So. Download that app for your little vegan toolkit. Join online communities. It'll help you feel more connected and it'll make you feel like you're not all on your own in this change that you're trying to make. Follow TikTokers, Instagrammers, YouTubers. 
And if you're still on Facebook like me, you can join local Facebook groups where people ask questions and share resources. And some people post their YouTube videos. I'll post a link to some good YouTube channels I like and some good Instagrammers that I like. I don't know too much about TikTok, as you can tell by my epic TikTok following, but they're out there. And there's actually a bonus tip that I'm throwing in. It really does get easier. It seems difficult at first, but after a couple of weeks for me, it became second nature. It just becomes like any other thing. It becomes as mindless as normally eating. I think that's one of the things that drives people away. They think that it's always gonna be this big challenge, this big undertaking for the rest of their life. But that's really not the case. And maybe that's in my personal experience, but I've heard that as well from so many other vegans. So it does get better, it does get a lot easier, and my experience has been so positive with veganism. Cool, so thanks so much for watching my video. If you enjoy the content, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe. Something I should have mentioned too that I forgot to mention in the intro is that I'm in Mexico City now. Let me know in the comments if you like this type of video, what else you'd like to see from my channel, or any other questions you might have. I'm probably gonna make a part two of this video because there were so many tips that I could think of, but I just couldn't put them all in one video and make it short enough you know and let me know what y'all think of the audio and the video i'm actually using new equipment and it took me forever to figure out i might go into it at another time but um it was a pain but anyways yeah so let me know if you have any feedback criticism as always and sending all y'all much love take it easy hasta luego bye